please join me in the call to worship. Come let us celebrate the forgiving, recollecting um, love of God. Know that God's love is lavished upon you forever. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Linda. Good morning, everyone. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. As you know, my name is Mija Cho. I'm a pastor at Oxon Hill UMC. God is good all the times. Amen. Amen. So let's give our hands to God. We are here to celebrate, to worship God with our whole heart, mind, and strength. And we are here as a family of faith to pray and to listen to the word of God. Oxen Hill is a multiracial and multicultural and intergenerational church that truly embodies the kingdom of God. No matter who you are, no matter what skin color you have, no matter what language you speak, no matter what sexual orientation you have, no matter where you come from, we are all God's children. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Our mission is to make and engage disciple of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Um, now let us uh, greet with each other and passing the Christ peace. We can say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. For those who join the worship service via Zoom, you can greet with each other with the hands, motions, peace be with you, what God loves you like this. Okay. Now let us worship God in spirit and truth, and we can bring our joys and peace and concerns uh, into God's hands. Let us pray. God of steady, best love and mercy, remind us all once again that in Jesus Christ, everything has become new. In this morning, as we see cherry blossoms and birds singing, so many other things have changed from winter time. Spring is here and you bring us here this morning to give us grace, to give us your steady best love. Mighty God, as we come together in this season of Lenten to worship you, to glorify you, we praise your holy name. You are our salvation. You are our everything that we cannot live in this world because this world cannot give us the peace that you give us. Mighty God, please pour out the Holy Spirit upon us as we come before the throne of grace, as we offer our prayers, concerns and petitions and supplications. Please listen our prayers. We ask your forgiveness that we did not love, that you have loved us. We did not do your will that you ask us to do. Please create clean heart, humble heart. Create right spirit within us as we come Receivers, just as we are. 
Mari God, we offer special prayers for our loved ones, especially for those who lost their loved ones this morning, the family of Jassi and Jojo Oralo. For those lost loved ones recent days, you know their heart. Please bring your comfort upon their souls. Wraps with your loving arms and give us peace that nothing can separate us from your love. But God, we offer special prayer for the people of Ukraine, people of Congo, for those who seek shelter, refuge, give them circle of hope, courage, and confidence in you in whatever situation they are dealing with it. Oh Lord, we offer special prayers for our church mission ministries. As we are doing the hybrid worship service via Zoom, in person in the sanctuary, and via live Facebook stream, wherever we are, please bring your spirit upon us so that we can focus on you in this time of worship and we can be blessed and be a blessing and bless our children and youth ministry and small group gatherings and bread ministries as we come together as a people of faith, seeking your directions, your guidance. So whatever we do and say and think, we can glorify you. Be with us, O oh God. We need to hear your voice from this place. And we thank you that you listen our prayers. There is a contrite heart, someone who cannot speak, but speaks in their heart, seeking your healing mercy. And we thank you that you listen our prayers, provide your healing mercy upon us and our needs. Now, as children of God, we offer our prayers that your son taught us with one voice saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you are able, please arise and let us sing 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy.
in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find <coughs> bless the Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 through 12 from the New International Version. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brother Don. So this is a children's time. I'd like to invite the children to come up front, front of seat. Okay, Christina and Melanie, Emmanuel, Gabriel, you can sit at the front. Yeah. Let me bring the microphone. Good morning, everyone. How are you? So good to see you. Okay. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning, Gabriel, Emmanuel, and Christina. So what I got here, do you, can you guess what's this? You don't know? Can you guess? Papers, okay, you're right, it's a post-it papers, Melanie. Well, I think it's found in parking now. February 11, 2002, there's a key here. Okay, there's a sunglass here. I don't know, this is a lost and found basket. Okay, so someone who are here, they lost their things. And oh, I like the sunglasses. <laughs> I can wear. <laughs> I think it's, this is too small for me. Probably I have a face shield. And we have how many sunglasses do we have? One, two, three. I like this one. <laughs> And I think it's, this is the glasses. And those who lost your glasses, please come to see me. And we have a sunglasses here. And I, I can show it to you. And this sunglass here. 
here. And what else we have? Let's see, keychains and keys. If you recognize this one, please come to see me. And we have a beautiful brooch here. So if you lost anything, come to see me after service. Probably I see some of them people recognize your things. So someone found the keys in the parking lot. Can you imagine that if you lost something like a keys, can you, you know, your house key, can you come into your house? No, right. I lost my keys and I couldn't, you know, come into my house. This is the earring, one earring, someone lost it. What else we have? Small keys. And we have another, well, I think earring thing, right? So there are so many of things like a penny things. So people lost. Can you imagine that if you lost something? Do you have cell phone? Can you imagine that if you lost your cell phone, how you feel? You will be sad, okay, okay. <laughs> Have you ever lost anything? You did, what did you lose? What did you lose? Your cell phone, okay, what else? You lost your headphone, yes, yes. I had that, I have been there. Anything do you lost? I lost my keys, I lost my cell phone. And sometimes I were very, I was very devastated when I lost my keys and during the winter time and I couldn't get into my house because I don't have keys. If you don't lo you know, if you lost your cell phone, you lost all the contact information. Nowadays we don't memorize the you know, phone number, right? Cell phone remember for us. So you are devastating. Well, in our Bible lesson today, it's about the lost and found. One of farmers who have, you know, who has like 100 sheep, and then one sheep got lost. So what these farmers did, you know? This farmer has like a 100 sheep, but the one sheep got away, got lost, and he has 99 sheep. But this farmer went out to seek this one sheep, leave 99 sheep. Do you know why? Well, Jesus tell the stories that, that this farmer looking for the, this lost sheep because Jesus said, if there is a lost one sheep in heaven, there's one person who repent their sins, there is joy there. Then 99 person who do not repent their sin, Jesus loves who come to him and repent their sins like us. Sometimes we get lost. Sometimes we lose our patience. Sometimes we sin and we get away from our parents. That means we get lost. So Jesus said, we have to repent. And then there is a joy in heaven when you get lost and you come back. This is the story of the lost and found. So imagine yourselves that if you lost your cell phone, your keys, and you found that there's lots of joy. But for God, sometimes people get away from God and coming back and repent their sins, and there's joy, there's heaven. That's why Jesus told us today. So make sure that um, you know, people think that they were better than others. God doesn't like that. God loves sinners who repent their sin. So that's the message today Jesus wants to say in the lost and found. Let us pray. Dear God, we give thanks to you 
that sometimes we get lost and we want to turn away from you. Please forgive us and make us to repent so that we can have joy and peace in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you, Melanie. So by the way, make sure those who lost keys come to see me. I just want to share with you. Maybe those who joined the worship service via Zoom, there's a key in the parking lot. If you lost any keys, please come to see me while in a text me. If you can, please stand for the reading of the gospel. I will be reading from the New International Bible, Luke 15, 1 through 3, and 11 through 32. The parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost son that I think people also know that as this is the prodigal son. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got all together, all together that he had and set forth in a distant country and then squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country, who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine that was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So what they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked, what's going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he is back safe and sound. The older brother began, became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I would celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes took home, you killed the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate and be glad because your brother, the brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Sister Barbara Bowman. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall on fresh on us. Mold us. Melt us. Inspire us. Spirit of the living God, 
speak to each other, mend us what is broken, touch our heart, and restore us so that we can be blessed and be a blessing for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have you ever seen a movie, Heart of Man? Heart of Man. It's about the relationships, especially broken relationships. It tells us that brokenness is not a barrier, but it is a bridge. The Heart of Man is a story inviting sons and daughters of God to let go of our brokenness and return to God. In our modern society, we see much brokenness in our relationships. I'm not different than they are. We all have scars and wounds. I don't know about you, but I had a broken relationship with my father that I had a hard time forgiving. Also, when I got upset with my sister, I was reluctant to give her grace. I was stubborn. And it doesn't give me peace. We all suffer in some of our relationships. I see there are pains and tears and struggles and our wounds and scars prevent us from living the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we even choose to learn from God into darkness. When I observed with my sisters, and it was like 20 years ago, and I told her, if you want to be forgiven, you have to realize what you have done to me and to your daughter. So don't come to see me. So I was reluctant to forgive my sister, but it didn't give me peace. But God says with us in our struggle, God sees our shames and struggles, even surprises us with God's steadfast love. When tax collectors and sinners came to Jesus and listened to Jesus' teaching, the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and read with them. Jesus then told them, just so there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. In the story of the prodigal son, we see the significant roles of the three characters. Who are they? Father, younger son, and older son. The younger son asked his father for advance on his inheritance. In Jewish culture, the younger son's request was very disrespectful. He treated his father as though he were already dead. But the father gave him the money he then ran off to a foreign country and wasted his money on wild living, drinking, buy expensive stuff. Soon he spent his last dime and all of his friends left him. When he had nowhere to turn to, he went to feed pigs to a Gentile farm. And in Jewish law, owner's shame culture, pigs were considered unclean and abominations. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7, and Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 8, those who care for swine, pigs, were cursed. The young son 
was hungry and destitute and walking in the field of piggy. His friends all left. He didn't have no one to turn to. Only way he can feed himself walking this filthy of a pig's tea. And he wanted to fill his stomach with the people and with the part that pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. He then reminded himself how generously his father treated his workers and he decided to return home. The father saw his younger son far off when he was coming over the hill. Then the father ran to him, put his arms and around him and kissed him. In Asian Palestine culture, an old man ran, it is regarded as a loss of dignity. This is a kind of honor shame culture. Yet the father did not care about his dignity. Instead, he was moved by compassion and joy. The father was waiting for his younger son to return home no matter what he has done. Not only did the father forgive him, but he also put his best robe on him and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and celebrate the son's return to his house. We often remember only the prodigal son, right? But you see, there is no prodigal son without the father who granted lavish grace to his son. Now let us look at the older son. He was very angry and complained to his father when he saw that his father had killed the fatted calf and celebrated his younger brother's return. When his father pleaded with him to join the celebration and the older son answered, listen, for all these years, I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property and with the prostitutes, you killed a fatted calf for him. It seems like the older son argues reasonable and saying that cheap grace to his father, cheap grace. Hmm. But the father said to his elder son saying, son, you are always with me and all that is mine, it's yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and he has been found. But the older brother may have considered himself as the faithful one and that he deserves more than his younger brother. Jesus teach them God cares about the sinners and rejoice with when they repent. This prodigal son story is about the God's prodigal grace. God's prodigal grace reaches out the sinners and outcasts and gives us hope. The older brother seemed reasonable. But so in the story of the prodigal son, who is the lost one? The younger one? The older son? Who is the lost one in this story? In whom, with whom do we identify? We usually identify the younger brother as the prodigal son who was lost and found. But you know, human rebellion can take many forms. 
However, some of us are like the younger son who turns away from loving relationship with his father. Others of us are like the older son, proudly inclined to reject the celebrations. Like the older son, we tend to think that we are righteous and grumble like the Pharisees and scribes. The elder son expect the father to punish the younger son. That was my mindset when I didn't give grace to my sister. The elder son thinks that it is just not fair that this wayward younger brother gets the fatty the calf and big party and think that it's not fair. But Barbara Brown Taylor suggested, we who imagine ourselves in the older brother's place will end up on that doorstep too and struggling with our own self-righteousness. And we'll have to make the same difficult decision to join the party. What to say out in the cold with our principles cold. I was like this older brother. We often figure that younger son is lost and found but both sons are lost. Both sons are lost to the father. The younger son through irresponsibility and the older brother through self-righteousness and pride. The younger separate himself from father's loving relationship by leaving his home and chasing his desires as alien in a foreign land. And ironically, the older son remained an outsider in his own home by refusing to join the celebrations, by refusing to forgive his younger brother. Likewise, the Pharisees and scribes exclude themselves complained that Jesus was reading with tax collectors and sinners, and tax collectors were seen as traitors who collided with the despised Romans. And the Pharisees and scribes separated themselves from them by judging others. And sinners were considered outsiders in the community, which means the lost in the eyes of the Pharisees and scribes because they had violated religious law. But in the eyes of Jesus, who are the lost ones? In what ways do we alienate ourselves from God's loving relationship? How might we contribute to our own sense of separations? When we find ourselves alienated from our relationship with God, how can we come back our way home again? We see the younger son lost and the older son lost to two. We see Pharisees and scribes, they are lost. I was one time Pharisees and scribes, so I was one time as a, like a younger son, I was like the, the older sons. We also see the Pharisees and scribes were lost as well as because of their self-righteousness and pride. So where do you find yourselves in this story? I am afraid that I find myself as the older brother saying, it is not fair, father, by which I am claiming my self-righteousness and refuse to forgive and accept the younger brother into God's loving relationships. I am afraid that I find myself in the position of the Pharisees and scribes, excluding others and looking my soul those in my eyes.
although we are not deserving of God's grace in the first place, but God continues to reconcile a loving relationship with us by inviting us and searching for the lost ones to come back home. We may be clumsy with the righteous indignations, like the Pharisees and scribes, who are the older brother. But when we judge others, how righteous? Jesus Christ asks forgiveness on a cross. Father, please forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Father, please forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. During our Lenten journey, we must identify who we are first and name it. Like the younger son, turning ourselves back toward our father's grace is the first important action, repentance, so that God's love can set us free from our brokenness. God's love always waits for us and hopes for our return home. We are the sinners. We are the tax collectors. We are the Pharisees and scribes who grumble that Jesus eat with sinners and tax collectors. They are religious insiders who strictly observe God's purified law, but ironically, ironically, ostracize themselves. They were very concerned with all the religious laws and how clean they are. But you see, it is the father who breaks cultural norms and shames himself. For from the perspective of the society, the tax collectors and sinners are lost. The scribes and Pharisees would see themselves as the 99 sheep who were faithful and obedient to God's law. While this shepherd searches for the one lost sheep, the sinners who had gone astray. In a way, we are lost in the manner of the Pharisees and scribes. We are the wandering and wasteful younger son and perhaps the resentful older son too. So can we bring ourselves to return to a loving relationship with the father? Can we attend the party and welcome the lost younger brother? Yes, we can embrace the possibilities, new possibilities and restorations and reconciliations a new life in Jesus Christ by creating inclusive Christian community. So in order to embrace the new possibilities, we must realign our focus on God's grace and love rather than looking our own scars on our brokenness and wounds that prevent us to live fullness life in Jesus Christ. In this season of Lenten, I would like to suggest to you a practical Lenten discipline. Examine yourselves and repent and renounce and restore your brokenness and choose someone whom you are struggle with and reach out to them and pray for their well-being and listen to their personal concerns and their personal prayer needs and cries of pains. Thinking about someone who did not come to church for a couple of weeks or who seems lost, pray for them and invite them into the church and offer them God's unconditional love through your listening 
prayers and practical hospitality. So dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. As you return to our loving God and realign your focus on God's grace and join the party, join the celebrations and welcome lost ones with God's radical love and hospitality. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are all lost in some ways. We sit in the place of the very and scribes. We sit in the place of the elder sons, sometimes younger sons. We see sometimes tax collectors. Please forgive us. Receivers and restorers. And we are so grateful for have taught us about forgiveness and salvation. As we walk this Lenten journey, we, might, we are mindful of what we have done, what we have failed to do. You have made this place of acceptance and encouragement. So be with us today as we praise your name. Resolve once more to walk in your light. How wonderful do we find your grace. How wonderful, prodigal father, prodigal grace. Keep us on the path of salvation so that we can rejoice together with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please arise and let us sing Amazing Grace. Through the gift of our possessions, our presence, we let those who are far from home know that we are their brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We were lost ones and we were found by God's grace. So with God's practical grace, we respond 
God's loving grace with our tithes and offerings. Let us bring our best gifts to honor our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we offer our gifts with our whole heart, mind, and strength for seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness, I believe God will add on to us whatever in, we need. We give in many differences in response to God's grace. First, we give via paper and oxygenumc.org or text giving or onechurchsoftware.com where you can mail your checks in whatever forms you choose. May God bless you and multiply for your for God's kingdoms. And especially these Sundays, please remember the people of Ukraine. We give the information in the chat picture and also uh, if you want to think about the people who are seeking shelter and refuge in Ukraine, and we, as a people of God and faith, we are called to care for each other and care for them, those who need God's prayers. While we are giving, our sister Elaine will give us a special songs. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Bless these gifts, generous God, that they may be used to find your children, children who wander in hunger, children who long to come home. Through our gifts, may all who wander set off from home. May we celebrate and rejoice in their homecoming. Bless these gifts and multiply and bless us as we give ourselves to you for your glory. Let the people of God says, Amen. Amen. Before we sing our songs, I'd like to invite Akalet to come to prepared and recess with me after benedictions. And I would like to give you some mission and ministry today. Today, we are going to use painting class via Zoom. Our sister, Dore Campbell Adams, will uh, prepare some painting materials for you and deliver to your house. So please talk to your children and grandchildren to join the painting class. And then use community service during the Lenten season uh, April 12th and helping the bread ministries. Please encourage our youth leaders and youth and, uh, and children to do, uh, bring the Christ light into the community. And during the worship committee meetings, we have decided doing the like homecoming service and Palm Sunday in the parking lot so that we can come out at the parking lot and join the worship service. 
So please invite your friends and neighbors and families to celebrate Palm Sunday. We will have a trust committee meeting so right after service. We will discuss about the, uh, to replace the roof in the chapel roof. So uh, please join the via Zoom at noon. And we have uh, SPS meetings March 29 at 7 p.m. And we are continuing doing the Wednesday Lenten Bible study. Please come and then you know, meditate what Jesus said to us on the cross. It's about the Jesus wording at the cross and seven words. And you can look at the, some other information. So Donna's dance class every Thursday. Uh, Gabriel, you can recess with me so you can stand here. <laughs> Thank you for doing wonderful job. And we have a uh, youth painting class and prayer vine gathering Thursday, 7 p.m. via Zoom and Stephen Ministry, April 14. Uh, if you have any other announcement, uh, please let me know. And I give thanks to you for those who participate in celebrate the life of Adrian last week. And we give thanks to God that give us opportunity to remember and cherish our memories of her, about her life, especially Barbara Hill Johnson and Heidi Houston and so many others, all of you. And I give you thanks to you and to God. As we grieve together, please continue to pray for each other, um, share your joys. Yes, Sis Evelyn. <laughs> well, can we sing the birthday songs for Evelyn? Because can you, Im not yet, can you imagine that she's turned 94, but she still comes every Monday and Tuesday serving the bread ministries. So what a joy we have her and we celebrate together. So we, yeah, go, hold a minute. Yes, Evelyn. Well, thank you so much, Sister Evelyn, you know, show a good example to us. So let us sing the happy birthday. We have uh, Grace Townsend's birthday, Evelyn and Brother Vito and Savannah, Molly and Macon Dunbar and Marvin Manuel and Doug Francis and you know, Donna Epperson, uh, this you know, the Neville Campbell Adams, Noel Agassi, Renee Cameron, Crystal Fernandez, Oh, Elaine's mm -hmm. birthday in the 22nd, mm -hmm. too. And Gil mm -hmm. Heider Houston's and Rodney Jack Williams and Daniel Efferson's. For those who had a birthday on March and who is going to have celebrate their birthday in April. So let's sing together. Shall we sing? Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to all of you. Now let us rise up and sing our last songs.
God loves us first. God comes down from heaven to save us. We all like a younger sons and older sons. We are all like a Pharisees and scribes and tax collectors and sinners, but God give us lavish grace upon us. Particle sons, God's particle grace bring us and save us. So go first in renewed strength and knowing who you are, the sons and daughters of God, celebrate and rejoice and welcome the only love. Wear your robe, ring with joy, be glad in God and rejoice because God loves you first and God invites you no matter who you are. May God bless you and keep you May God's countenance shine upon you always. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Patty. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great job, Gabrielle. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. 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 Good morning.